What's up, you two? <clears throat> P Town Piper here. Um, I'm gonna be coming at you with another cigar review. Uh, this is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. Oh man, I'm just admiring the plume on here. There's tons of plume on the cigar. For those of you that don't know what plume is, um, once all like the natural oils um, and stuff like that in the cigar, they kind of work themselves out it creates this kind of film, almost a white powdery substance on the outside of the cigar and that's called plume and uh, that, that's good, you want, you want that maybe yeah, like I said, this is the cigar I've been wanting to do for a long time I've smoked, smoked plenty of them, just um, usually for pleasure um, not to say that I don't get pleasure out of uh, smoking gar cigars, you know, right here, because obviously it's full pleasure. I just mean, you know, smoking it not in front of the camera. Don't take me wrong when I say for pleasure. I, I get full pleasure out of smoking it sitting right here in front of the camera. So, don't get me wrong. It's a uh, Drew Estate Underground. Um, I've already told you the story of the underground before, and most of you might already know, but for those who don't, um, I'll go through it quickly. Um, the people that work at the Drew Estate factory get to smoke whatever cigar they want. They all smoked the Liga Pravada number no. 9s, and it got to the point where they smoked so many that they couldn't keep up with the shipments, of, you know, where they needed to send all the cigars out to everyone, they were smoking too many in the factory. So, you know, they told them, hey, you guys can't smoke the number nines all the time anymore, you need to smoke something else. So, the people that worked in the factory took it upon themselves to um, make a new cigar that they wanted to be very similar to the number nine. And what they did was they went and they looked at, you know, everything that they used to make the number nine you know, say it was like a five-year uh, old leaf off of, of like a plant, and the the way they've aged the plants, um, one plant will have different leaves on it, like uh, Seiko and Habano and all the different leaves. Well, those are, are different qualities, pretty much. So, let's say they used like the bottom of the plant off of, uh, you know, for the plant for the number nine, well, then they use the next step up, you know, for the undercrown. Or if they you leave, if they use the very bottom of the plant off a five-year-old plant, then they use the very bottom of the plant off a four-year-old plant. So they tried to make it as similar as they could to the number nine. And then one day, uh, Drew Estate ended up smoking one. He didn't know what it was. He went out to the factory floor and asked the head factory guy, you know, what cigar is this? And and he uh, he actually said to him, um, whatever, however you say it in Spanish or Nicaraguan or whatever his factory is, I think it's Nicaragua, um, he, he said, this is our cigar, this is our cigar, and then, you know, told him this, told him the story, so anyway, I always think that's a cool story to tell, to hear, so, any of you out there that haven't heard the story, there you go, but, anyway, I'm excited to get this toasting. Super excited. <clears throat> and uh, one thing too, an old guy uh, told me you know, that I've uh, been smoking cigars for a really long time. Uh, what he does with his cigars, because you probably noticed that I'm already uh, lighting it, but I haven't cut it yet. Um, you get the cigar lit first, and then you cut it, and that keeps the cigar airtight. Um, it's mostly for when you're using a torch lighter. I don't have a torch lighter out here. It actually works a lot better with a torch lighter to get it fully lit. But you get it fully lit, and then you cut it, and that doesn't allow any air to go into the cigar. Any hot, that hot, charred air to go into the cigar not until you take that first draw. But it works a lot better when you have a, a torch lighter. Oh for it to be, you know, completely lit. Let me take that first round. I don't have my cigar cutter out here either. I'm going to have to use a razor real quick. Pop that cap off. Yeah. I'm getting way too good at that. <laughs> I need to remember my cigar cutter.
Mm. Mm mm mm. Until the, the middle's not lit because I didn't have a torch lighter. Man, I haven't smoked a cigar in a few days. This is delicious. Hmm, it's full body. Definitely a full body cigar. You know, honestly, I don't even want to do this review because I just did this snuff. I think it's really changing the flavor of the cigar a little bit because, you know, I've smoked plenty of these and I know what they taste like. It's, it's a little off. Just a little. But, on the draw, the smoke is very rich and, and creamy. Very rich. Almost chewy. It's sweet on the draw. Got really good coffee, almost espresso kind of notes, dark chocolate. A little pepper right on the end. But I think that might have to do with the snuff because it left a little bit of that. Because it's kind of a, uh, a minty, but it's more of like a like a you know, like some mints, you know, like if you drink water after, it makes it like intense, like an intense kind of, whew, you know, that's what it is, so it made the back of my throat kind of, uh, intensified. A little, uh, retro hail there. Mmm, so smooth, so smooth. A lot of cigars, when I try to retrohale, they're just harsh, so harsh. Sorry if it looks like I'm looking down. I have a tendency to look at myself because I'm using a webcam. I have a tendency to look at myself, you know, talking. I, I always try and look up at the camera lens, but maybe I should try looking at the light. There's a little light next to the camera lens that lets me know that, you know, the camera's on. Maybe I should try looking at the light. But yeah. Just a rich, creamy sweetness on the draw with notes of coffee, espresso, chocolate. A little pepper. Just overall sweet. Almost maybe a little toastiness. A little, maybe a little, little caramel. Not caramel, maybe that's just the sweetness. It's just the heavy sweetness. But impeccable draw impeccable construction but you always get that from an undercrown this is the second one I've smoked that I've cut uh, I've smoked a lot of them with a punch by punching them when I first started that's all I did was punch cigars uh, I've been cutting for a while now but uh yeah, I, I want to say that it smokes better with the cut. Yeah. Gosh, just the construction on this cigar. It's just a beautiful cigar, you know. You can just tell that you're smoking a, a, a premium cigar just by holding it and... Taking a puff on her. Alright, guys. I'm going to end the video here. About 10 minutes in. So, um, soon, very soon, I'll be getting uh, a camera where I can, you know, actually pause it and uh, edit and stuff like that. All my videos, from, you know, I've had to do on a webcam, so I just have to just run it straight through. Right when I press stop, it poof, puts it straight to my YouTube page. 
Okay, one thing about the cigar, too, that I've noticed a lot of people say is the smoke that comes off the end when you're just letting it chill. It's a smoky cigar. It really is. But what can you do? It's a good cigar lounge cigar. I've smoked a lot of these at the my cigar lounge. You know, they got the ventilation system, too, so it just sucks that away. Can't even tell. Love this cigar though. Pretty smooth on the French inhale too. I normally don't French inhale my cigars or retro hail for that matter. Uh, retro hail is when you take in the cigar and you blow some out your nose, but um, specifically a retro hail is when you blow most of the smoke out and then just a little bit that's left you blow out of your nose. Actually, this cigar is very, very smooth for a retrohale. Like I said before, a lot of cigars that I retrohale are just like, whoo, you retrohale it and you just get a straight pepper bomb. At least I do. It's all over my palate, just whoo, instantly. But this one, super smooth. Super smooth. And still, just that same sweet, chocolatey coffee. Maybe a little pepper in there. Very, very smooth. Lots and lots of creamy, creamy, rich smoke. And just an overall fantastic stick. So, alright guys. There you go. That's the Drew Estate Undercrown. I highly, highly recommend you try the cigar if you haven't had it. It's uh, a wonderful, wonderful stick. It really is. Alright, guys. Sweet smoke. P Town Piper. Signing out.